Good morning, folks. Premium content pre-order available today. Details at the end. We're looking at the current position of C-2012 S1 Ison in the solar system. We'll set her in motion here. Inspiration for today's opening comes from Spitzer. The June 13th photographs analyzed to determine the fine elements making up its tail, spanning approximately 300,000 kilometers, or just short of the distance from the Earth to the Moon. All official measurements still put this comet around three miles across, and even if it's small, remember Comet McNaught did not have a huge nucleus but was one of the brightest in history. I've linked lots of stuff here if you're interested in Comet Ison, and the Fly on the Wall premium content will have lots of discussion about it, including about 40 minutes already processed. The Stereo Ison site is terrific and shows where you can see Ison in the Stereo and Soho images, and when you will see them. Coming to weather, we still got the struggler trying to pull himself together south of Mexico. Meanwhile, yesterday's underrated development is underrated no more. Today and tonight, we will turn attention away from likelihood of development and towards the projected pathways for this cell. Vast majority of Australia having mild conditions, while the southern coastline and across to New Zealand, the precipitation is complement to waves of Antarctic chill. The low cresting Europe is causing heat waves east of it due to the northward drive of the wind up into the counterclockwise helix and storms at the convergence line. West Coast and Eastern Pacific showing no major cells. The development in the U.S. last night and into this morning occurs, surprise, surprise, at our convergence line, swinging southwest from that power low pressure cell north of New England. Its counterclockwise draw brings cool air down from the north side of the convergence and moist heat from the south up to meet it. Storms across the convergence should be minor today, but the western side and to the south may see torrential downpours nearing deluge levels. Folks, I'm coming to really dislike this simulation for its misunderstanding among many of you. A nice impact wave visible there, yes, but it wasn't real. This is a model only, taking all its data from the ACE solar wind, which shows a density wave unconfirmed by SOHO. But it is an error, as these unusual jumps are when there is no speed or temperature change to the plasma. ACE began having issues like this in its 11th or 12th year of service and has pretty much continued the last few years, but that's why we have the SOHO data to confirm. Otherwise, still a highly useful tool. Now, as for this model, nothing actually watches these lines. It is just fed ACE data and it guesses, but I fully understand the confusion you have. It was fed an error and it shows an error. Solar wind is indeed quiet. We can confirm that with our other measurements. That will change tonight or tomorrow with the coronal whole stream impact. Flaring is quiet, says the broken record. Same three sunspot groups on the disk. Development, but no magnetic mixing up here. Development and magnetic mixing on the south, something to watch. And the northern incomer looks yet unimpressive for flare potential. The umbral field appeared to pop wide open yesterday. Take a moment to notice the coronal holes in red and green. The red departing coronal hole contains all of Earth's magnetic connectivity to the Sun, still divided between a bunch of seven and three on the other side of the coronal hole. I expect our connectivity to change rapidly as the hole fully leaves the Earth-facing disk. The coronal hole to the left of that is transequatorial and just faced Earth directly. It's the coronal hole impact we expect tonight or tomorrow. Lastly, this tiny protruding sliver under the northern hemisphere is that thin coronal opening shown yesterday, the next incoming coronal hole. Looking at the H-alpha from Gong, dark lines are plasma filaments, got one facing us today. Premium content details coming now, eyes open. No fear at 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.